NATO kinase has recently gained a lot of popularity in the supplement game. There is a new study that has come out regarding its effect on heart health. Despite all of our efforts, heart disease is still the number one killer in both men and women. So if we want to live longer, the number one place we should be focusing majority of our effort should be on our heart health. In this video, we are going to go over some studies to see if NATO kinase has any benefits. And at the end of the video, I will go over other ways to improve heart heart health as well. So let's get into it. First, let's just go over atherosclerosis, which is the clogging of the artery walls from a buildup of plaque. And when those walls get narrower because of the clogging from the plaque, less blood is able to flow in and out of the heart. The heart is a muscle and needs that blood flow. Reduced blood flow is what causes chest pain, which is what can lead to a heart attack. A stroke is the same process, but when it happens to the brain instead of the heart. NATO kinase is found in NATO. NATO is a cheese-like food, which is found in soybeans. NATO kinase is considered to be a significant contributor to the longevity of the Japanese. NATO is also a very good source of vitamin K2 as well, and I will make a video on that in the future to go over those benefits, but for today, we will just focus and stick to NATO kinase. NATO kinase is a supplement that is considered to have fibrinolytic and antithrombotic properties, meaning it can thin the blood and prevent blood clots. It also potentially has anti-atherosclerotic and lipid lowering effects. We will go into the studies on it now to see what effects it really has. So in this study, they retrospectively analyzed data from 1,062 participants who received NATO kinase orally for 12 months. So some positives right off the bat is the size of the trial. Over 1,000 participants is a really good sample size. However, a problem is that they were all from China, it seems. That makes it a little difficult to extrapolate the data across other nationalities and cultures because the results might be because of other factors based based on Chinese lifestyle. So that's something to keep in mind for this study. Also, the study was retrospective, meaning they looked at patient files to see who had heart disease and who didn't, and if those people took NATO kinase or they did not. Other factors aren't able to be controlled, like with a randomized controlled trial, because it is not a present-day study. We are just looking at final results and trying to find a trend. So the study included patients with mild hyperlipidemia, which is high cholesterol levels, which is good, that is the population that we're interested in. In, and the dose used was 10,800 FU daily, and the FU does not stand for f it's for fibrinolytic units. So take it easy. And that dose of 10,800 units is about two to three times higher than the usual dose used. Also, they separated the participants into groups that may have caused an effect on NATO kinase, such as exercise, body weight, alcohol consumption, smoking, and if they took vitamin K2 or aspirin. What they described as exercise in the study was strange, however, as their cutoff was 5,000 steps. That's a pretty low cutoff that unless you're just sitting in an office chair all day, you should be able to get on a daily basis just by living a normal life. Also, people that do strength training are doing heavy exercise, but it won't really translate into steps because they are not moving around much. They are just working on their muscles. So that wasn't a good separating factor in my opinion. Also, they mentioned aspirin administration, but no mention of anything to do with diet or statin therapy, which can have a massive effect on lipid levels. Very strange that they left out those two big factors as well. So now, if we look at the results of the study, we see that after 12 months of daily NATO kinase consumption at a dose of 10,800 fibrinolytic units, a significant reduction in triglycerides, total cholesterol, and LDL cholesterol was evident to the values before treatment. Furthermore, NATO kinase also had the effect of increasing HDL cholesterol. So the study claims that NATO kinase decreased levels, and this chart shows by how much those levels decreased in total. So here we see triglyceride levels drop by 15.7%, total cholesterol drop by 15.9%, LDL cholesterol drop by a whopping 18.1%, and HDL cholesterol increased by 15.8%. Now that might look like amazing results, even better than some statin medications, but the problem here is that there wasn't anything to compare to. There was no placebo group for us to directly measure the results against. We have no idea if the lipid levels came down from the NATO kinase or any other lifestyle changes the participants made. Were there any drastic changes in diet, exercise, or were there some people taking a statin? No mention of any of that in the study. And all of those things would drastically change the results, so it was disappointing that none of those things were considered. 
So the study ends by stating NATO kinase at the daily dose of 10,800 fibrinolinic units, which is higher than the recommended dose of 2,000 fibrinolinic units, is significantly effective in the management of atherosclerosis progression and hyperlipidemia. In my opinion, they did find lipid lowering effects, but was it from the NATO kinase or something else? The study design wasn't that great to differentiate from these two things. Fortunately, we have another study that is a randomized controlled trial that I'll go over next, and then after that, that, we'll look at a study that looks at NATO kinase and blood pressure control. So this study of NATO kinase versus placebo directly found a null effect on subclinical atherosclerosis progression in healthy individuals at low risk for cardiovascular disease. Now the dose used in this study was only 2,000 fibrinolinic units, so some would argue that the dose was too low to have an effect, and they might be right. But the issue is we need a well-designed randomized controlled trial with a higher dose to confirm that it does have any benefit. The previous study did not have a placebo group to compare to. So although it was a higher dose and showed positive effects on lipid lowering, we don't know for sure how much of the lipid lowering was due to the NATO kinase, if any at all. Luckily, there is a study with a higher dose of 4,000 fibrinolinic units that showed no difference in NATO kinase compared to placebo for lowering any lipid levels. Very small changes were seen, but were not considered to be statistically significant. Also, another study here concluded that short-term and low dosage ingestion of NATO kinase might have no significant lipid lowering effects. Further clinical trials investigating long-term and high-dose administration of NATO kinase on cardiovascular risk factors were strongly recommended. Now, let's look at NATO kinase for blood pressure control. In this study, there was a drop of 5.55 millimeters of mercury, which is comparable to a low dose of the blood pressure medication lisinopril. This study is a lot more reliable than the first study as it has a placebo group to compare results to, so we are pretty sure that the positive effects seen are from NATO kinase supplementation and not some outside factor. The dose used was 2,000 fibrinolinic units daily, so it seems that a low dose is also able to have some benefit, although higher doses might be required to prevent atherosclerosis. So this can potentially work on a patient with mild hypertension to bring their levels down to optimal levels. Now, in terms of side effects, none of the studies found any adverse effects, so it does seem to be a relatively safe supplement, although again, I wouldn't rely on the previous study to lean on to determine that it is safe as there wasn't a placebo group to compare to. The study did not report any adverse effects at all, so we can assume that there wouldn't be any side effects in a randomized control trial either. However, I would caution with this supplement if I was on blood thinners or have had a cardiovascular event previously, such as a heart attack. So speaking with a qualified cardiologist before making any changes to my supplement or medication regimen is very, very crucial. Keep in mind that 50 milligrams of NATO has 1,500 fibrinolinic units of NATO kinase in it. So this is clearly not a harmful supplement and does seem to potentially have some benefit in heart disease, but would I supplement with it? Probably not as the evidence is not there yet in its favor. I would focus on exercise and whole food diet to optimize heart health, which brings me to the next section of the video, how to optimize heart health. We want to eat a highly balanced whole food diet that is high in protein, specifically lean protein such as fish and chicken, and less fatty protein such as red meat. We also want high fiber as that has shown to reduce cholesterol levels along with mono and polyunsaturated fats found in fatty fish, avocados, nuts, and seeds to name a few. Avoiding excess calories, especially in the form of sugar, is crucial as well as that will keep our blood sugar levels and weight down. Exercise is extremely important as well, focusing on strength strength training, and cardiovascular training. Avoid smoking and alcohol as much as possible as well, and we've heard these things a million times before, and I promise you, you will hear it a million times more again in the future because it works. Focusing on these things and reducing stress will have a much greater effect on your cardiovascular health than relying on an unproven supplement such as NATO kinase. And if cholesterol levels are still not optimized, maybe you can try NATO kinase or red yeast rice to see if it has any effect on your lipid levels for a few weeks or a few months before moving Moving on to medications that are known to work for sure, such as statins, azitamide, and rapatha, if those natural supplements do not work. I have another video here where I go over the results of red yeast rice for cholesterol lowering, so please check out that video as well. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you next time.